Welcome back to Rafa's Tuesday's Thought. I am missionary teacher, Josette Crooks McGrowder. So last week we left off um, and talking about some cognitive distortions or unhelpful thinking styles and we're going to continue. Last week we touched on all or nothing thinking and we also touched on overgeneralization and I gave you some homework to just kind of review and to think about whether or not you're using any of these unhelpful thinking styles that will affect your relationship negatively with Christ. So we're going to continue, and the next cognitive distortion or unhelpful thinking style is mental filtering. And this is where you only pay attention to certain types of evidence. You filter out or ignore the positives and only focus on the negatives. So. You notice your failures, but you don't see your successes. In this case, what you deem as God's failure towards you, because he did not answer a certain prayer, and forget. So you look at the, what you're deeming as God's failure, and you forget all the good things that he did for you, or all the other times that he came through for you. So you're only looking at the negative and you're not looking at the positive. So you might pray for something and it didn't happen and that's all you're focusing on is that God did not do this for me or he did not come through for me in this way and that's all you're focusing on but you're not focusing on anything else. The next topic is disqualifying the positive. So this means that the person discounts the good things that happen to him or her, and they only look at the negative. So the good things don't count. They don't matter. They don't exist. They don't count, or they were just a fluke, or it was just a one-time thing. So you are saying the good things don't really matter. Telling yourself that positive qualities or even successes do not count. So the individual convince him or herself that whatever, and you can fill in the blank, is negative. Everything's negative. And that's how they think and focus. And if you're always thinking negatively, it is going to show on the outside eventually. Some of your actions are eventually going to reflect what's going on in your mind. And you remember last two weeks ago, we talked about the five factor model where we say that your thoughts influence your emotions and your emotions influence your behavior. And then from your behavior, there'll be some kind of physiological situation happening. And then it goes right back to your thoughts. So, the individuals that disqualify the positive. I think this is such, um, this is something that we really need to look into. So for example, you are the child of God. You're filled, filled with his Holy Spirit. Yet you are convinced that you are completely bad you are inferior, you're worthless, you're useless, you are the worst of worst. Right? You're a child of God, you're filled with this Holy Ghost, this Holy Spirit, but this is how you're thinking. So God has given you his righteousness. Because our righteousness, as the, the Bible says, is like filthy rags. So here, God has given you his righteousness. 
And yet you're going to say you're a completely useless, bad, worth, worthless person. You don't see any of the positive characteristics that God has bestowed upon you, that he has given you, that others see in you, but you're focusing on the fact that you're no good. How can you be a no good person, a low down person, awful person, when his spirit dwells in you? So then you have to ask the question, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit that God has given me, that God has gifted me, because I couldn't get it on my own. He gave it to me. I did not work for it. It was a gift. So he's given me his Holy Spirit, most sacred. And yet I see myself as a nobody. I see myself as, you know, not good enough. If that's what's going through the mind, then the question should be, what is influencing my mind? Or who is influencing my mind? What, are, what am I feeding my mind with that I could be thinking all these negative things about myself? If you can sit and keep having these negative thoughts about yourself and actually believe them, where did you get these thoughts from? Where are they coming from? They're definitely not coming from the word of God. And so that is what we're supposed to feed our minds with, the word of God. Feed our mind with God. God is his word. And that's who we should feed our minds with. So when an individual is depressed, he or she often use these unhelpful thinking styles, these cognitive distortions, and thoughts such as I'm no good, no one loves me, no one cares, I'm not good enough. Those are thoughts that an individual who's depressed entertains. Constant negativity, nothing is positive. Now, if you're entertaining those thoughts in your mind, how can you have a good relationship with God? Because you're basically telling him that he did a really poor job on you. He didn't make you good enough. He didn't make you pretty enough. He didn't make you whatever that thing is that you think you don't have. Something to think about. As a child of God, we should never be looking down on ourselves in a negative way. We should be humble, absolutely. But we should be people who walk with their heads held high because we know that we're children of God and we know he loves us and cares for us. Regardless of what's going on in our lives, that does not stop God's love. We might not get what we want when we want it, but it's certainly does not stop God's love towards us. And remember, Dr. Burns said, depression and anxiety are two of the world's biggest con. If you find that you're depressed or you're anxious, then you're telling yourself a lot of things in your mind that is not true. You're telling yourself if you're anxious that there's fearful things out there and something beyond your control is going to happen, and you know, you're in danger. That's what anxiety is, the person believing that he or she is always in danger. But as a Christian, even if you are in danger, who is in control? God can definitely rescue you from whatever situation you're in. So as Christians, we don't need to be anxious individuals. Yes, anxiety might come, but not for something, not something that should live in our minds. Same thing with depression. Because the devil is using these things and convincing you that they're true. So these thoughts that you're having that are negative, that are producing doubt and fear, you're believing them. And so the depression continues 
And so the anxiety continues. So disqualifying the positive, I, I took a lot on this one. Because you think of it, God filled you with his Holy Ghost if you're filled with this Holy Spirit and you don't think that is positive because something negative happened, God is allowing you right at this minute to watch this session and how you can have a better mind, a better relationship with him and you don't think that's positive. God is revealing himself to you and you don't think that is positive. God has invited you to feed on his word. I would think anyone watching this, you have access to a Bible. Whether it's on your phone, whether it's on the device that you're watching me on, or whether it is the physical Bible, you have access to his word. And that is the best thing you could feed your mind is his word. God has brought salvation to you and yet you're not seeing it as positive. That's not positive. We're talking about disqualifying the positives. God just allowed you not to get into a car accident. Is that not positive? Take a few seconds and look back, uh, look back at the many things God brought you through. Just take a minute and, and just look back at some of the things that you thought you were never going to make it. Some of the things where you think, oh my goodness, this is it for me. It's never going to get better. Take a second and look back and see where you are now compared to where you were back then. How can you not see that as positive? You are alive and breathing at this moment. Is that not positive? You have a roof over your head. You have food to eat. A lot of us, if we don't eat, that's because we don't want to. It's not because the food isn't there. You have clothes where you can change your outfit several times for the day and you don't see that as positive. Sometimes because we have so much, we're late for everything because we keep on trying and putting on different things because we have so many change of outfits. You're in a country and, and we take these things for granted, but you're in a country that is not war torn. You wake up with an alarm clock, not just you, we, myself, us, you wake up with an alarm clock. I wake up with an alar alarm clock instead of a bomb. Family members, your wife, your husband, your children, are they are healthy. So we need to look at these things when the disqualifying, the positive kind of thinking comes to your mind. You need to remind yourself, we need to remind ourselves, of how blessed we are and how much positive is in our lives. When you focus on the negatives and you disqualify the positives, you invite a lot of negativity into your mind, hence into your life. You invite misery. When we only think of the negatives, we invite misery into our minds. We invite hopelessness into our minds. We invite sadness into our minds. We invite despair, depression. And right back to the topic, we invite doubt into our minds when we disqualify the positive. We're also ungrateful when we disqualify the positive. When we're only looking at the negative, that makes us ungrateful. So I want us to think about it. Am I disqualifying the positives in my life? 
Am I disqualifying all those things that Christ did for me over the years? Very important that we look into that. The next one is jumping to conclusions. And this one is broken down into two parts. We have fortune telling, and then we have mind reading. Fortune telling is when we, we're predicting the future. And mind reading is imagining we know what others are thinking. So fortune telling can trigger doubt and hopelessness in a person. You jump to conclusions regarding how God thinks and feel about you based on whatever the result of something was. You might start questioning. If God really cared, he would not have let this happen to me. If God really loved me, this would not have happened. God would have done this for me if I was his child, if he really saw me as his child. And now you have all this doubt because God didn't do what you wanted him to do. So you're predicting, he's not going to do it, so I'm not going to do this. I'm not even going to bother do this because this is not going to happen. So you're fortune telling when you really don't know. If God says through his servant, Sister Jasset, this is going to happen. And I go, hmm, no, heard that before, it's not going to happen. Then I'm fortune telling because I'm deciding what's going to happen. If his word comes in whatever way, through a song, through someone preaching, through you reading the Bible, and you're saying, no, that's not what's going to happen, then you are saying that you know the future and what's going to happen. So do some reflecting. Do you believe when such and such man or woman of God say, this is what God says towards you? Or do you sit there and start doing the fortune telling where you're saying, nope, it's not going to happen. No, I don't believe it. Didn't happen before, not going to happen again. So check when, you know, what's going through your mind. Then we have mind reading. And this one, we mess up our minds in thinking that we know what others are thinking about us. So... I think I know what my brother or my sister is thinking about me based on something that might have happened. Let's say the person um, walked in to a room where I am and they forgot to greet me or, you know, they might have a weird look on their face. And then I jump to that conclusion that this is this person's thinking negatively of me. Right. So that's what we do with mind reading. I know what the other person's thinking. And I believe that the first night I said, we cannot read each other's minds. Unless God permits it, we can't. And I was thinking about this mind reading and when I look at it in regard to our relationship with God, here we have the audacity to think that God is thinking of us negatively. We're assuming that because we didn't get what we wanted or what we asked for, that he's thinking of us negatively. How can it be right for us to be thinking we know what God is thinking unless he reveals it to us? God don't love you? How do you know that? He doesn't care because things are not going your way? That's not how God operates. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. So when you're thinking all these negative things about yourself and you're attributing them to God, saying this is how God's thinking of you, go to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Because cognitive distortions 
do not create peace. They create turmoils. Isaiah 57, verse 7 through 9, and it reads, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto God, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens, heavens are high, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we need to check our thoughts. What's going on in our minds? We should be feeding our minds with God's words. God's words is what we should eat day and night. Even when we don't eat regular food, we should be feeding ourselves on the word so that our minds can get in the right place, so that doubt can be removed from our minds. Thank you for being with me tonight. And I will see you again next Tuesday as we continue to talk about the mind. Make sure to tune in tomorrow, Wednesday at 8 p.m. to be in the pastor's Bible study. God bless you and I will see you next Tuesday.